everyone and welcome to this Valkyrie Sound tutorial. This is the first in a mini-series looking at adaptive audio powered by a data engine, something that takes information in and feeds it to our audio systems. Later in the series we'll use this system to drive an alien-style motion tracker, homeworld-style battle chatter Striker, and reactive music. Assault. So we'll create a radius around the player and use that to find the closest pawn. In the event graph of the character blueprint, Create a custom event by right clicking and typing in custom. I've called mine run clear line of sight. This is going to reset all of the parameters that we're about to make. Even though the NPCs we're detecting won't always be in the player's vision, it's shorter to write line of sight than it is to write proximity. The first value we'll create is line of sight distances. This is a float value and it's an array. So just click the little icon there, which is normally this capsule, and we'll just select the array. The next parameter is an actor parameter called list of actors line of sight radius. We can find this one by clicking the drop down and searching for actor. We have this huge box and explanation for that one, and it's the object reference that we want. But again, that is an array. Next, we want a parameter called closest line of sight actor. This is going to pinpoint which actor is actually the closest to the player. Again, it's an actor variable type and it is the single type. Next, we have two float parameters. The first is called NPC closest distance line of sight. And that again is just a single variable. And we have a second float which is going to be the MPC line of sight radius. Now, the first of these ones is going to help our system identify which of the actors is the closest to the player. And the second one is a parameter that we can define as it sets the maximum distance of the radius. And therefore, it tells us the maximum distance over which things like our motion tracker will work on. By default, I set that value to 5000. All of the other values will be defined by the system that we're about to make, so we'll leave those values alone. So, from the run clear line of sight event, we want to add a clear array node. And into that, we're going to plug our list of line of sight distances. Then we're going to add another clear array node and plug in the list of actors line of sight radius. You notice it'll change color when you plug those values in. Next, we're going to set the closest line of sight actor and the NPC closest distance line of sight nodes to zero or to nil by plugging them in here, but not having any input values for them. We'll come back to that in a moment. Next, we're going to create a new custom event. Again, right click, type in custom, add custom event. And this one I've called run line of sight loop. To the end of the run clear line of sight event chain, we're going to add the run line of sight loop function that we just created. So you pull off from the set parameter there, type run line of sight, and you'll see the function that you've created there. From that new custom event, we're going to add a sphere overlap actors node. We're going to get the player character which is let's get player character. From there, we're going to get the actor location. Oops, if I could spell, get the actor location. And that's going to return a vector that we then plug into the sphere position input of the overlap node. We're going to pull our NPC line of sight radius value and plug that into the sphere radius of the overlap node. This one I always find a bit tricky. If you pull out from object types, and type in make, get you the option that we're after, and we want to set that to pawn. And finally, if we drag off from the get player character node into the actors to ignore node, you'll see that it creates a make array node. This lets us tell the overlap node to ignore the player character when it's doing its uh, detection. From there, we want to get a branch node and connect that to the execution output of the overlap node and the return value is going to go into the condition input of the branch node. That's going to check that we have actually had an overlap. If that return value comes back as true, we're going to set our list of actors with the out actors 
of the overlap node. So make sure those are both plugged in. Next, we're going to do for each loop node. Now into that, we're going to plug in the output exec and the output array of our set parameter node here. From the loop body output, we're going to create an array add node, which is this one here. And into the array input of that, we're going to plug the list of line of sight distances parameter. From the array element, we're then going to get distance two, which as it says, returns the distance from this actor to another actor. So that's our air element going into the target there and the return value output, that float, is going to go to the float input of the add node. The get player character is going to be plugged into the other character because we are determining what the distance is between each of the actors in this array here as compared to the player character's position. So this will work out the distance between those two this tallies up all of those values, the actual distances for each of the actors. And it'll run through until the list of actors in the radius has been exhausted. Once that's completed, it'll move on to this, where we've added the set NPC closest distance line of sight. So this is the float value, the actual distance to the closest actor. From the input there, if you drag out and you want min of float array, and that's going to find the smallest value and the index at which it was found. Into the input of that, we're going to add the list of line of sight distances, which we just created up here. And from the index of min value, we're going to pull off, we're going to get an array, and it's a copy that we want to get. And into the input of that get node, we'll add the list of actors line of sight radius. From the output of that, we'll set the closest line of sight actor. So this tells us which actor is the closest, depending on the minimum value of this, and compared to the list of actors in the radius. Make sure as well, of course, that your execution pins between these two parameters are connected to make sure that this gets actioned. This section here is just for debugging, something that I do quite a lot, as you probably noticed if you've seen my other videos. It's totally optional, you don't have to do this. It just helps me out when I'm putting things together. This here, by the way, the draw debug line is quite an interesting little feature. I only found out about these things recently. But if you right click and type in draw debug, you have all of these options to draw different debugs, basically, um, on the screen between two points or whatever. This is really useful because the draw debug line draws a line between the character and the NPC. So you can visually see where it's tracking the other NPC as you get near it. Finally, we're going to add an event tick node. And from that, we're going to run clear line of sight, the custom node that we created before. And that starts the whole process running. And that's it. That's all we need to do to get the closest NPC. And I can hear you thinking, that's great. That's fantastic. But what can I use that for? Well, if we go over here, if we take the MPC closest distance line of sight value and we divide it by the MPC line of sight radius that we set and we deduct that value from one, we get a figure between zero and one that increases as we get closer to the closest NPC. And if we plug that into a new parameter, one that we might call motion tracker input, for example, we can use it to modify the sound of a motion tracker in the game. And that's something we'll cover in our next video. That's it for now. Thanks for watching. Take care, and as always, enjoy making your own projects.